Happy Pride Month. Keeping that in mind, what better time than now to talk about one of my favorite comic book characters of all time, Rene Montoya. I've already mentioned Rene briefly in one of my videos earlier this year, but the story I'm talking about today is arguably the best known story about her, the Gotham Central storyline, Half a Life. Gotham Central is a really good series that I would encourage you to check out for yourself. But here's a small preview. It's basically a police procedural set in Gotham City. Think Brooklyn Nine-Nine set in the DC Universe. The protagonists, who belong to the MCU, no not that one, have to deal with not only regular crime and corruption, uh, and keep in mind that this is Gotham City and it has one of the worst crime rates in the DCU, but also supervillains and a mostly uncooperative vigilante. Credit has to be given to the writer duo of Greg Ruka and Ed Brubacher, both of whom are experts when it comes to writing crime and noir stories. They use a mostly unknown cast, there's no Commissioner Gordon, it's only mentioned that he handpicked the police officers because of their honesty, and Batman appears as a shadow most of the time. The only established characters whom the readers might have heard of are Maggie Sawyer, whom you might know is also a lesbian who was formerly in a relationship with Batwoman that got cancelled because of some stupid anti-marriage policy that DC had at the time, and of course Renee herself. So let's talk about Half a Life. Renee is not having a good day. A guy called Marty Lepardi is suing her with a bogus lawsuit and she has dinner that night with her parents, where we see firsthand how, you know, parents are ultimately human beings with their own biases and flaws. Her father wants her to give him grandchildren, and when Rene points out that her brother is also seeing someone, several someones in fact, he brushes it off as her brother being young and will settle eventually, but she's becoming an old maid. Hurt by her parents' words, Rene makes a call to someone whom she wants to meet up with. Returning home in the morning, Rene is greeted by two internal affairs officers, Esperanza and Conway, who inform her that Lapari, the man suing her, had hired a PI to follow her around, who has now turned up dead. But they haven't been able to locate the evidence the PI collected. But the evidence soon makes itself available, in the form of a picture sent to the GCPD, of Rene kissing another woman outing her as a lesbian to the world. Renee's partner Crispus Allen, who some of you will probably know as the man who became the third Spectre later on, feels that this is Lapari taking revenge on Renee for busting him. Maggie Sawyer, who was the department head of the MCU, talks to Renee about the IAD officers who came to visit her and also wants to try to talk to her about getting outed. Renee, however, doesn't feel that Maggie can truly relate to her. As, despite both of them being lesbians, Maggie is a white woman, whereas Rene is a Latina with super religious immigrant parents who expect her to have grandchildren and think being a lesbian means going to hell when you die. Later that evening, Rene's brother Benny comes to visit her and shows her that her parents were sent the same photo as well. He managed to smooth it out for now but wants Rene to go talk to them and reassure them. She flat out refuses and Benny tries to counter back by saying the long debunked myth of how her choices shouldn't hurt her parents. She of course says that she didn't have a choice but Benny is no longer in the mood to listen and leaves. She calls her girlfriend Daria and they meet up at a restaurant. After seeing Daria home, Rene is accosted by Lepardi who threatens Daria and Rene decks him and takes away his videotape. Lepardi stumbles home muttering about how he'll take revenge on Rene but is shot on entering his apartment. Next morning, Rene is brought in by the IAD officers and after her girlfriend accidentally reveals that Lepardi had threatened her, Rene is arrested. While she is in holding, Crispus comes to visit her and asks who would go through all of this to set her up. She reveals that it was Dent, aka Two-Face. Rene catches a bit of a break as none other than Bruce Wayne sends one of his lawyers to get her bail as quickly as possible. But her transport is attacked by masked goons and she's taken away, making her a fugitive as well. While this is going on, Crispus along with his temporary partner, McDonald, discover that one of the IAD officers, Conway, helped set up the charges on Renee. 
Crispus talks with one of the officers in the department about it, or so he thinks. Batman is here, and he's leading them to Two-Face. Meanwhile, Renee is greeted by Two-Face, who sets up a fancy dinner with her. His reasoning for all this, Renee was nice to him, and treated him with a lot of respect. So he set about to woo her, by systematically destroying everything in her life so that the only thing left would be him. Renee, of course, points out that if he went so far with the blackmail, then he knows that she's a lesbian. She also points out that yes, she was genuinely nice to him, but if he misinterpreted that kindness for something else, that's not on her. Unfortunately, Dent doesn't take rejection very well, and once Rene turns him down, he plans to kill Daria so that Rene truly has no one to return to. Luckily, Batman shows up just in the nick of time to stop Two-Face, or alternately to stop Rene from killing so, him. So, happy ending, right? Rene's name has been cleared and Two-Face has been sent to Arkham. Not quite, as due to Dent's actions, Rene has been forced out of the closet, and now she has to talk to her parents. And the story ends with her parents disowning her for being a lesbian. Half a Life is an excellent story of a criminally underrated series. It puts the character of Rene Montoya through the ringer and would have major repercussions for her. Things do not get better for her. And Gotham Central would end with Rene eventually quitting the force. She keeps on struggling and fighting. She stumbles and falls, but she eventually gets up. Always. I became a fan after reading this arc, and hopefully I was able to make some of you fans as well. Once again, happy Pride Month. Stay safe and be well.